Well, welcome to Teachers Who Shaped Us. We are so honored today to have Chief Justice Rush speak with us and share the impact of educators on her life. So Chief Justice Rush, thank you for taking time to be with us today. Sure, Dr. Jenner. And I'd love for you to start. I mean, you were at the highest position in our courts in Indiana. Tell us about your path in getting there. Sure, I've been an attorney and a judge for 40 years. Um, I was a partner in my law firm for 16 years, did trial work, um, litigation. So you're representing clients in court. And then I became a juvenile court judge for 13 years, which was a real strong turn. I had done a lot of volunteer work with kids that are in the system, but I really had a passion for them. And in 2012, Indiana was one of two states in the country that didn't have a woman on the Supreme Court. Oh, wow. And I thought, that just can't be. So a bunch of us applied, and I met Governor Daniels for the first time in my final interview, and then was appointed. And then a year later, um, the Chief Justice stepped down from being chief. And I almost didn't apply, but I thought, oh, I'm going to apply. And then I found out that day I was Chief Justice. So I've been wow. nominated two terms to Chief Justice. Wow. So I'm the first woman. There's only been one other woman on the court, but I'm the first woman Chief Justice of Indiana, and I'm on my second term. Well, we're so thankful to have a strong woman in that role. And this space that we're in right now, I can tell you, I come to the State House every day and work. I've never seen this space. Uh, tell us a little bit about this. You've missed out on it. This is the <laughs> Supreme Court Law Library, and I love this library. You know, as a young girl, I moved every year. I went to 16 different, lived in 16 places before I graduated from high school. Wow. My dad worked for the railroad, and we just went along the train line from Hoboken to the south side of Chicago. And so the first thing I did in every community, once I was able to walk, um, was get a library card. And so I spent my days in line. You know, I was always the new girl, but I always spent my time in libraries. So you spent your time in libraries and, and, and obviously jumping from school to school was, I'm sure, very tough. Right. Tell me about the teacher's coaches that really impacted you on your journey? There were so many, particularly, you know, I was really shy and I had, you know, I would, couldn't say my R's. I was Luetta, Luetta Walsh okay. in a wed dress. Wow. Um, and then you'd be this new girl, always showing up as the new girl. And so I loved to read and I loved school. I love school. And I remember third grade, I moved three times. I remember my teacher was Mrs. Muth. And I don't think she was ever married, but she was one of those just great, warm teachers. Mm -hmm. You know, made sure I had a seat, made sure everything was done. Her kindness and her well, her understanding what the you go through as the new kid. You know, school's hard. You know, growing up is hard. I think it's harder now than it was then, even. So she was really kind. So she was one of many. And then I always did sports, too, okay. because I what think— What sports? I did. Well, I did everything, but I was bad in a lot of them. But I was good at <laughs> swimming and good at running. But I tried probably all of them. You know, just thinking back to your pathway and uh, pathway into law, we're talking a lot in Indiana about making sure all children know their value and see their purpose and find their right pathway. How, what, what teachers or, or adults inspired you to get into this legal profession? Probably... Well, it's interesting. I had never met a lawyer or a judge before I went to law school, never wow. been in a courtroom. And if my family was around courtrooms, it wasn't really on the good side of probably mm -hmm. being in courtrooms. Um, and I, but I love my constitutional law. I had a uh, professor, John Tiford from Purdue. He was a fantastic teacher. He had a love of the law, he had a love of the students. He wanted, if you wanted to do well, he wanted you to do well. He wanted to know you cared. And he cared. Mm. And you know when you're a student, when your teacher cares. They care not about what your grade is or they're putting in there. They, they care about you as a person. They understand yes. that. So, in fact, I just went. They, Purdue just honored him. You think I took his class 78, 79? Mm -hmm. I was just with him this weekend. So I've kept up with him over the years. Wow. So, as you know, this series is all about just celebrating and elevating the educator profession. So any final words that you would share to Indiana's educators? Yeah, I can't thank you enough. If I had one wish for children in Indiana, it would be get an education, mm -hmm. get through high school, just get that high school degree. You're, the trajectory of your life will be significantly different. So I can't thank teachers enough. I have a lot of teachers in my family. Um, I think it's a noble profession. And uh, 
the more we can build it up and be supportive and not just keep putting everything, school solve all our problems. You can't do it. You're mm -hmm. to educate our kids. Um, and we've got to help you more. Well, thank you again, Chief Justice Rush, for sharing your wisdom and also your path that brought you to this incredible position you're in leading our state. Uh, and thank you for taking time to celebrate Indiana's educators. Well, thank you. And thank all the teachers here in Indiana. I, uh, we are blessed to have the quality of teaching that we have in this state. Yes, we are. Thank you.